the parsha. Im If you will go in my ways, it's mitzvah sai tishmar. Whenever you will guard my mitzvahs, but see some of and do them. When it's not the vegeshem ichem be tam, I'll give you rain, and they'll have produce, and the fruits of the field are going to grow, and the vineyard is going to grow, and you'll eat bread to sovea. You're going to have all the brachas, and you'll have peace in your land. And everybody's going to be afraid of you, your enemies, you're going to win your enemies. So Rashi, the very fa- it's a very famous Rashi, that says, now, if you think you're talking about mitzvahs, we're not talking about mitzvahs. Can't be. Why? Because Rashi says, you might have thought that maybe we're talking about the commandments. So what does it mean, im b'chukhosai telechu? What does it say? Im b'chukhosai telechu, that's mitzvah say tishmaru. What is that? You're saying the same thing twice. If b'chukhosai telechu means the same as mitzvah say tishmaru, so what are you adding? Therefore Rashi has to say, we're talking about a melis b'tayra, working hard, working, working and learning. Dedicating yourself to learn Torah. Working to get b'shah, working in Torah. And from there is going to come all the brachot of all the klalot. It's a good thing. <laughs> from there is going to come all the blessings and all the curses. If you're a melis with Torah, you'll show me the Torah, you'll keep the Torah, the Torah will continue, will continue for doors, doors. It will stay strong even when you go into galus, even when you leave wherever you go, as long as you're home of a Torah, you'll have all the brachos. Okay? And if not, slowly, slowly, if not one generation, next generation, so as Doros, as the generations go on and on, things get worse and worse. And on the other hand, if we're Shomer Torah, we, and we, we're Amelus with Torah, because the Torah itself is the one that gives the thing that gives the energy to keep the Torah going, so it will continue. Comes along with Chaim Shmuelavich and brings the Gemara, it says, in the end of days, after 120 years, the person is going to go up to the heaven and he's going to be judged. What Gemara is that? This is Gemara Yoma, 35b. And it says three people are going to go up. This basically covers everybody. The poor guy, the wealthy guy, and the wicked guy. They're all going to be, go up to be judged. They say to the poor guy, did you learn Torah? He says, listen, what can I do? Uh, I was poor. I didn't have any money. I had to spend all my time. In Hillel? It says Hillel would one, earn, learn one coin a day. And with this coin, he would give half of it to enter the base midrash, and the other half he would use to have his whole family live on. And you can imagine, if you give half the coin just to get in, to pay the shomer to get in, it can't be worth very much. So he's really living a very, very poor life. And he became Hillel Azak, and he became the great, great sage, and he was learning Torah, and he was poor. So were you more poor than Hillel? That's what they're, they're going to ask him. One time he couldn't, Hillel couldn't get into the base midrash, and he, sl- and he slept in the snow to put his ear on the, on the window in order to hear what was in the base midrash. Were you poorer than him? He was still, he was poor, and he still learned Torah. He became a great, great Tamachacham. Okay, what are you going to do? So they said, and what about the wealthy person? Say, listen, you know, I had a whole businesses, I had a corporation, I was really, you know, raking the money. You know, not only I was raking the money, but I was even doing tzedakah with the money, and I was helping support yeshivas, and I was doing, and I was, you know, I was giving tzedakah and helping poor people. They asked him, were you richer than Rebbe Lazar? You know what Rebbe Lazar, he inherited a thousand towns. He had a thousand towns and he had a thousand ships. I mean, you're talking about the unbelievably rich, right? And he used to take a sack of flour on his back and go to the basement just sit and learn. Even though it's true, he had to take care of all the Rebbe Lazar. Had to, he was extremely rich and he had to take care of his business and he was supporting his sheep and who knows what he was doing. But he still came out to be Rebbe Lazar. Now we're talking about the wicked guy. And they said, listen, I was, you know, I was, very, I was a very handsome guy. And I had, uh, you know, I had a lot of typhus, I had a lot of desires, you know, everything was available to me, I was hanging out. So I said, listen, were you more handsome than Yosef? Yosef, one of the Avos. He was constantly being, at the, he had Bas Potiphar chasing after him, he had women chasing after him. It's that they used to stand up and look over the, the gate to see what, they wanted to see Yosef, he was so handsome. Were, were you, were, you couldn't control yourself? He had, he had much more, a much bigger test. 
it says the boss potif is changing his changing your clothes every ten minutes and coming and bothering him, and still he became Yosef. He was Yosef Asadik. So what excuse do you have? What did she do? What? What did she do? She used to change her clothes. She was trying to seduce him one day, and he still controlled himself. So I say, listen, you, you couldn't control yourself, but you see, he could. This is Rev Chaim Shmuel Levitch, Rosh Shiva Mamir, from the door before, asked this kasha. The kasha is like this. Wait a second. You just brought me an example of Hillel Azake, Rev Lezer, and Yosef Asadik. And you say that in Yom, in Yom Adin, after 120 years, a person can get to heaven, and they get a Strength, so much energy, so much color. How can you compare me to Rebbe there? I'm just a little guy. You don't, don't compare me. That, this is not fair. That is a great kasha. How can you compare me? How can you judge me on what my position is going to be for eternity based on Hillel Azak and Rebbe Lezer and Yosef Asadik? It's not fair. They had tremendous strength. I'm, I'm not in the league. For example, a guy says, listen, you know, O.J. Simpson, Labdiel, O.J. Simpson had rickets when he was a kid, and he learned that he overcame all these obstacles, you know, and he became one of the greatest football players that ever lived. And why were you? What happened to you? What do you mean? I'm a skinny Jewish kid. What you, I, I can't be O.J. Simpson. You know what I mean? I, I'll never be O.J. Simpson. Yeah. Who knows? You would have worked hard. No, it's not true. It's not true. I, I, I couldn't have been O.J. Simpson. <laughs> right. But, but you say, I, don't compare me to him. I'm, I'm not going to be like him. Right? I'm not going to be that. A quarterback for the, the Green Bay Packers. It's not going to happen. But I'm going to give the answer to Captain Molevich. He says, listen, that's true when you say things are not fair. If you're talking about extra things in life, why didn't you reach these levels? But if you're talking about something that's essential to your life, something bread, water, air, even says reveres down your blood, right? Torah is, a, is, is the essence of a person's life. It's the essence of his life force. It's the essence, the purpose he was put here for. So that levels the playing field. There's no longer what you, why you're not like him, I wasn't like him, I wasn't like that. You never saw a person when they didn't have bread, mamish, sit in their house and say, what could I do? I don't have any bread. Maybe he does it for one day. Maybe he can do that, they can do that for two days. But after three days, he picks himself up and he goes and gets bread, right? He doesn't say, what can I do? I don't, what can I do? I don't have water. just sits there and dies. The, the people, the, the people don't do that. So when it comes to the essentials of life, when it, you felt the Torah was essential, so there's no excuse. Since the Torah is really the is essence of why we were put here, and that really is the source of all of our energy, and it gives us the, the motivation to go forward, so there's no excuse. The whole field is level. Every person is equal when it comes to fundamentals. The Torah is a thing. We learn Torah properly. We learn it be human. It gives us energy to go forward. Life can be very difficult. And my Rebbe used to say, how did Jews made it through the Holocaust? How can a person, after he lost, you hear stories of Gedolim who lost 10 children, they lost their wives, and they rebuilt themselves. We can't imagine what these people went through. It wasn't just the whole, it was before the Holocaust, and all the doors were set all over the place. How can you stay positive? How can you go forward? All the doors before, but people were killed and murdered, and who knows what. How did the Jews go forward? And even in today's day and age, how do you go forward? There's so much problems, there's so much, there's such hardships. Life is filled with hardships. How do you go forward? The answer is when you learn Torah properly, you come out of this base midrash happy. You come out with self-confidence. You come out with, with you feel motivated. You heard a beautiful thing. You heard you heard a word of Torah. You heard truth. You heard something that touched your soul. And it gives you the energy and the power to go forward with life. How do you a person that shall have bias problems, but they don't, doesn't have peace in his house, he doesn't have, uh, he has got problems with his kids, he has got financial problems. How do you handle all these things? The answer is the Torah is the life force. When a person really learns Torah properly, he gets energy. He sees something that is so amazing. 
when you see a, a, a Machlok as a Rashi and Tosos, like we learned yesterday, and we had the Ritva, we had the, the Shittimuku Betzis, and had the Rashi and the Tosos, and you see the, this unbelievable light that comes out of learning, it gives, you person, it gives the person the energy to go forward. Yesterday I see a guy sitting in front of a, a, a store where they sell tires. And the guy's sitting there waiting for a car to drive up so he can sell him another tire, right? He's a miscan. He's a poor guy. That's, that's a life. Is that called life? And even if you sell insurance or even if you do, but if you do it day after day, and even if you're making money, and even, even, is, that, is that life? That's the meaning of life. 120 years of selling tires? 120 years of, 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 of working in a store? Where is the person? What? Between customers. What? You should be learning between customers. Right. You should be. And if he was learning, I'm not saying that you don't have to work. Person has to, if he has to work, he has to work. But, but, but if he's involved in learning, it gives him the energy. He's able to, to overcome all kinds of forces, all kinds of energy. Otherwise, the person gets depressed. And if a person, and it gives him the energy also to overcome his Yetzirah Sahara. This is a Torah, Torah Tavlin. The Torah is the, sum, the, 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 the spice of life. The medicine, it's the medication of life. How can I overcome all my desires and all my own nonsense and my mind is not clear and I can't think straight and I, and I have desires to do this and all these things and I can't control myself and then the person gets himself into a downward spiral. Life, the Api Kabbalah, life is created like a hay, right? You know this thing? Life is like a hay. The world is like a hay. So you have the hay like this and you have the thing. The bottom is open. If you don't work on yourself and you don't learn and you don't pray, then you start to slowly fall out of the bottom of life. You just go in a downward spiral. Life has a tendency to bring you down. So how does a person go forward? How does he get his energy? How does he come on positive? If a person wants to have peace in his house, he has to come on positive. He has to come on feeling good about himself. When a person learns Torah, he feels good. It's the thing that gives life. The Rambam says that if a person is a Chacham and he desires to learn Torah if he would go into Gullis it would be and he doesn't have a Rebbe, he doesn't have someone there, someone there to learn with him it would be like he's dead a person whose mind is already open to Torah, has already been exposed to Torah who already knows what are the mitzvahs if he goes to a place where he cannot learn it's like he's dead and therefore his Rav has to go into Gullis with him that's the halacha that tells you that the rabbi, if the student goes to the galas, the rabbi also has to go. If the student's in exile without a rebbe, it's like he's dead. If we don't learn, we're like dead. People are miskanim. People out in the world are really miskanim. They have a life, they get up, they go to work. But really, it's almost like they're dead. That every mitzvah is connected with one limb of the body. Right? There's different sinus disconnected with the limbs of the body. So if you do that mitzvah, you keep those mitzvahs, when you get to the next world, your spiritual body is dependent on the energy that was pumped in in this world with the mitzvahs of learning Torah. We know that Torah is the biggest mitzvah that exists. Talmud Torah can make cool. We are building ourselves eternity by learning. And so it's not only just kamus of learning, it's also the echos. It's also not just the amount you learn, but it's also the quality of the learn. It's the energy you put in. If you put in, once you realize that putting energy into learning, into Rashi, into Tosfos, into the Shittu Mekubetz, by putting that energy in, you're getting back 10 and 20 and 100,000 times more the amount you will be driven to do that. Because every drop that you put in, you get back. And what do you get back? You get back life. The point of Rukham Shua Levitch is you get back life. By putting energy into learning Torah, you're getting life force. You're building your eternity. And that's why the playing field is level for every living being.